Good. There's some tension here too. Look out for me. It's really tight. Yes. It's like really deep in there. <laughs> like kind of on this side of the muscle. Good. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I'm gonna bend the leg here. There we go. You feel how sore it is back here. Yeah. We're way off there. It's not as tender, actually. So that's probably the most tender point of all. Oh, you are a little ticklish. Uh-oh. There's no tight muscles at all. So that right there. Unlock your full potential at Crack Addicts. Hey guys, it's Dr. Matt from Live Spring Chiropractic in Austin, Texas. We're here today again with Natasha. She may look familiar. Uh, she, we saw her before previously for some shoulder tightness and shoulder tension, but something new came up and I figured it would be worth showing. So what did you do? What happened? I was stretching and I heard this pop and crack in my like hamstring area and my like the pull, like the tension just went loose and I fell over and I was like, what's this thing? So this just happened today, yes? Yeah, and then I called him and I was like, hey, I think I broke my leg. <laughs> so let's have you point to even where you felt it. So it was while like doing right yoga here. and right on the back of the hamstring, but you felt a pop. Yeah. yeah. So what I told her previously was that when we hear a pop, it's usually not actually a muscle, it's coming from the joint somewhere. So that muscle, the hamstring attaches up at the hip bone and down at the knee. So I'm thinking it was one of those two things, but we're gonna do an assessment so we can figure out what's going on with that, where it's coming from. Um, but we're gonna start actually with just some light motion first, because I wanna see how you're moving now after that. Uh, just reach forward first. So pain with that on the A hamstring. A little bit, but not okay. much. Okay, and then how about just leaning backwards? So we're looking. Yeah, like right here, but it's not, it's like really deep in there, you know? Okay, um, so right here for your nerds out there, what we're doing is we're moving through the pelvis. See how the pelvis moves. Uh, when she leaned forward is actually where we see most of that uh, abnormal movement come in. But let's see a side bend to each side now. So sliding your hand down your leg, good. And then to the other side. Does that agitate it to either no. side there? Okay, good. Um, let's have you lie on your back, please. So okay. face up. So before we look at her spine, we're doing things different today because of what she's specifically done to the leg. And I just want to feel that normal motion first of that mm -hmm. knee. And then also some of the motion of the hip as well, internal and external rotation of that femur, we call it. I'm thinking just from uh, kind of seeing her move a little bit, to me it's looking like it's coming from more of this. And I'm actually gonna palpate here the trochanter. Yeah. Yeah. And tendered it right that. there. Yeah, me too. So, and more so right in the middle, right there. Mm -hmm. So more than on the front yeah. and more than on the back end of that, mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. So I'm palpating the greater trochanter for anyone that's nerdy out there watching this. So now we're gonna... Yes. So internal and external, and that even more so, yeah. is not moving. So feeling for internal and external rotation of the hip, that's where it really gets stuck, or that's where yeah. it really doesn't wanna move. So just from that, in my mind, I'm definitely thinking more so, it's coming from that hip, and then we're gonna feel that front to back glide of the knee that feels fine, and then a side to side too. So anytime we hear something, if it is a pop, I'm just checking worst case scenario, structure of her knee for that structural integrity, making sure you didn't pop any kind of oh. ligament or have any kind of tear yeah. in the knee, you have not. Yeah. yeah, and this should not feel painful at all to mm -hmm. you. Definitely from feeling motion and just mm -hmm. from doing a couple slight things, it is that hip, so that pop, mm -hmm. even though you didn't feel like it was coming from your hip, yeah. It was. So let's have you go face down, please. So turn over and we're gonna do some analysis more with the pelvis on the SI joint. So the sacroiliac joint. So looking at the leg length, we're way off there. Natasha, you're, really bad. you're right on the leg. 
It's significantly shorter than the left. With Was the it the other way around? Yeah. What's happening? So, probably just something that she did to her pelvis when she was doing yoga. And yeah, that, uh, that. Me, yeah, immediately, me too. Yeah. And on that, so more on the right oh, side, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that right one was the one that was way short. And even though on the front end it was the left hip, you feel how sore it is back yeah. here on the right. So the problem is not always even where we perceive we feel something, it can be something connected or something close. And then I wanna muscle test the hamstrings also. Okay. The hamstrings neurologically are controlled through here, the lower lumbar. So mm -hmm. from talking to our nerds out there watching the video. So let's test again the good, the one that you didn't feel anything to, so that. And I want you to kick toward your head like that, okay? Go ahead. Okay, and I'm giving good resistance there. And you've got good strength, Natasha, you feel how that? Yeah. Feels good. Now one more time with this, push toward your head. And Ooh, not, not as good. It's yeah. not horrible though. That's not even that really that worst one. We're gonna do a couple more, because I'm thinking more so just that pelvis is where we really need to address. So I would expect with feeling her pelvis and seeing the leg length here that her glute muscles are really disengaged more than anything. Mm -hmm. So let's have you hold this out here. I'm gonna push in, don't let me and nothing there. So exactly what we're feeling is. And you feel, Natasha, how did that feel weak to you? Yes, super weak. Okay, and we'll check the other side for reference. Hold there, so much better. I can't move it. Now let's check the other glute, the glute max, the big mover here. I'm gonna push the leg down, don't let me. Okay, not horrible. Let's check this one. Same thing, hold here, don't let me push it down. I said don't. <laughs> I, I, I know. <laughs> Feel it, it's it's harder, right? Yeah. So we're gonna make an adjustment to that right hip first there. So okay. let's have you on your side with that right side up, and then I'm gonna bend the top leg. There you go. You know the drill. And I'm gonna roll her whole body toward me. Soften there. Soften. Good. And then let's have you go face down one more time. We're going to retest a couple of things and we're going to see if that feels different to you also. So first thing that we looked at, and even how she laid on the table is different. It's straighter, which is good. And then the leg length there, we're back to even. That was a huge change. Yeah, and that's not yeah. poking out so much and that probably feels different. Mm -hmm. How does it feel compared to where it did? Left tender and there's no pain. Good, that's what we want. So then as we retest these muscles here with the nerves from the pelvis control, we should see better activation. So on that right side was where we were finding the weak ones. So hold here, Natasha, I'm gonna push in, don't let me. Hold, okay, there, one more time, hold. There, good, and that's what we want. Kind of bring this up, I'm gonna push down, don't let me. Good, and then let's check the hamstring on this opposite side even, so kick toward your head. Hey, hey, I like it, better. So seeing those muscles turn back on, that's good. So before we even do anything else there, I wanna have you stand and I want you to just, we're gonna run through that motion again and see if that feels different even. So now, again, just reaching forward. Yeah, I feel like pain here though. So on the hamstring still. Yeah, is. but that's probably a muscle, right? Yeah, so okay. muscle attaches to bone and we went to that uh, origin, origin of where the hamstring starts. So we're still going to uh, evaluate, but one more time with the extension also. So with back, so you move better Yeah. through both Mobility, of those. Mobility, yeah, yes. range. So that's first thing, but now I'm, I am gonna actually feel that muscle where you're feeling it. So okay. let's have you lie face down for me one more time. So I'm gonna palpate that muscle from origin to insertion, and really that center point is where I'm gonna start, where she's feeling it. Um, and where, so point one more time for me it's where like you're- right here, cause, or okay. like here, like kind of on this side of the muscle. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So there's a, 
couple divisions of that muscle and I'm feeling right in that center piece of where she's pointing to so I can see, yeah, and I feel some ropiness right through there. I wanna feel that other one for reference, nothing there. And that, yeah. right there. And as we trace that, yeah. that's actually worse as I got That's up. exactly like, yeah. yeah. right, right there. So that right there, mm -hmm. yeah. So this is a classic, what we call like a, just a sprain strain injury. So something where a sprain refers to more of the passive, so the joint being injured. And Natasha, what that means is that actually that hip bone mm -hmm. itself where we were, yes. that, that we adjusted but then the, uh, the strain refers to the muscle. So you actually, that hamstring muscle, oh. you did strain. And right there, as we move up mm -hmm. to where it inserts, it inserts right on their sit bones. So we're gonna be right up where it inserts. And it's worse as I move up. I don't know if you feel that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably the most tender point of all. Yeah. Right there, I'm gonna put pressure on it and I'm gonna move toward that insertion sh as I shorten the muscle, and then I'm just gonna lengthen it out like that. And then as we have her move again through this after, should feel better. There we go. Okay, good, let's have you stand for me one more time, and we're gonna do that same motion that we went through as we have you toward. Oh, it feels like so much looser. <laughs> Good, yes. Yeah. So now that's where addressing both bone and muscle comes into play. Now we've done that. We're gonna adjust the rest of your spine now. Okay. So let's uh, have you go face down for me one more time, please. So feeling for motion of her spine. We've been working together for a while now. So knowing where her spots are that we've been working on, but still every time things are adapting and changing, so it's different. Right there between your shoulder blades. Mm -hmm. Big breath in for me, please. Let it all go. A little push there. <laughs> there, good. You know how knotted up that was too? Yeah. I didn't want to move with just a little bit of pressure, so the more that second time. And good, just Breathe through here. I want you to expand your ribs as you breathe, and we're just gonna let that area move. Good, and it should feel easier to move. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what we want. And then we're gonna feel, and this is usually the hot spot for you, mm -hmm. is right around the neck area there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And right yeah, there. I feel that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with this, we're gonna do it a little different this time. Let's have you turn over on your back. Okay. So with the left hand, I'll have you grab the back of your neck on that same side. Good. Now I'm actually gonna be on that side. And then with this hand and we'll keep it right here. I'm gonna put my hand right over yours. Okay. And we're gonna be on upper ribs here. Big breath in for me, please. Good, let it all go. <laughs> yeah, it is stuck, so we're feeling those ribs glide. We're gonna have you do this one here, and then, <laughs> all the hair. Okay, I'm gonna put my hands right over yours. Okay. And then there, squeeze your elbows together. And I'm gonna lean you back. Look up for me. There we go. Good. <laughs> so good, that's the movement we wanted. And with that, for people watching out there, I'm actually vectoring that here with my sternum, right along her spine to get that right angle. So it's not just looking for a noise, but really wanting that specific spot to move. Uh, so let's have you go face down one more time. I mean, to feel the upper back. Yeah, so much better there. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna use this. It's just a instrument that we're using to adjust your neck. With some people, I always like a cracking or a popping or a twisting. What was your experience? You were one that you prefer something else? I like it, but I also was like, I don't know. It's kind of 
This I like this though. <laughs> she likes this. So uh, with the first thing I'm gonna do is palpate the muscles along the sides of the neck. And let's have you look down for me, please. And that helps them stand out more. And on the right side, mm -hmm. all the way up the neck, that muscle's really ropey. And I'm gonna move your hair this way and we'll show the camera right up close on the neck here. And what I'm feeling for along the neck is just these muscles along the side and right here on the right side. You feel that, mm -hmm. Natasha? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel to you when I'm It feels like, like almost, I don't know, like a bruise, like it's hurt, it's like tension and like a sore muscle. It has a lot of tension there, yeah. So with you, it's been a couple different things that we've been working on in the neck, but the main one has been that top bone. Mm -hmm. It's called the atlas and that right side there yeah. where my hand is. So at the top and this bone I'm about to make an adjustment to so many times is the source of jaw problems, jaw tension. Oh yeah, I have a clicking jaw. Does that have to do something? There we go. <laughs> like my mom told me to ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, good thing I mentioned it. Yes. And you can tell your mom that you had asked me now too. Okay, so perfect. we'll look at the jaw too here <laughs> afterward. Let's actually see the jaw open first and then close it. I can feel it click too. So it's her, your problem is your jaw is too mobile actually oh. on that right side. So it means more homework. Okay. We got exercises <laughs> to do to create stability. If it's too mobile, if you've seen our other videos, we don't adjust it. We stabilize it through exercise. If it's stuck and not moving, then we'll move it. But a lot of this for you is the neck. When we okay. stabilize your neck, yeah. your jaw tension is going to minimize or go away. And there on right side so this is really specific on this bone and we know how it's moved and I gotta get that angle right here we go and what, what does that feel like for the people watching feels like that? a spring just like a spring on you just hitting you right yeah and describe the difference for me now I'm laughing over here a little bit because I can feel the difference yeah like let's let you talk no there's literally like a rubber band that is not doesn't have tension anymore. <laughs> the tension's gone, yes, Feels completely. Good. So let's have you look down one more time and I'm just gonna refill the muscles. And as I move my hand back and forth, there's no tight muscles at all mm -hmm. in the neck. So again, a muscle pulls tight for a couple reasons to try to splint or guard a joint that has a problem with it, which is going on there. And also to help try to pull the bone back into the right position. So when we do that, when we correct one of these joints, the muscles calm down. So, but sometimes, like we saw, we gotta do a little muscle work, like on the hamstrings, so stop mm -hmm. hurting yourself. <laughs> and what were some of the things you were originally coming in for? I uh, came in, it all started with my left hip, um, just kind of feeling like it needs to be popped into place, but I could never get to it. Um, then I started having troubles with my shoulder, feeling tight and having some pain there, especially during my workouts, mm -hmm. and some knee tightness and a lot of swelling Ooh. in that knee, so yes. just kind of left-sided. How are we doing? Way better. <laughs> Way better. Good. So much better, yeah. Um, I'm able to work out now, do the workouts I wanted to do and finish cool. them completely without pain. Yes. I'm able to go heavier, so that's been amazing. Um, the knee hasn't swelled up, the shoulder hasn't hurt, the hips been perfect, so. I love it. Yeah. And then I would assume that translates even at work, maybe just a little more comfortable being on your feet with how long you are. Yeah, I've noticed at work, um, after the 12, 13 hour shifts, I would come home tired, which is to be expected, but a lot of back pain, and I just related it to keeping the stress in the back and mm -hmm. stuff, but it's really things that accumulate, so me not being aligned properly contributes mm -hmm. to that. So it, it wasn't normal, but I was thinking it was. So I just feel lighter. So, How many yeah. people can relate <laughs> yeah. to that for sure? Cool, and then we will do, we haven't done an updated posture picture. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing we always do with all our patients. The very first day we up, we do a posture picture to see where we're at and we do that again down the line, roughly a month out each time mm -hmm. to see uh, how it's corrected. But without further ado, let's have you go face down and let's check in on everything, okay? All right. Cool. So checking in with the hips, left side versus right side. And it's the right side we've been adjusting. That's another cool thing to mention because it's a lot of left things going on for you, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes, absolutely, yes, it's where we feel it. But sometimes with the hip, 
there's really not a left or right side yet yeah, sure there is but functionally the hips are the hips okay so if we change the right side we're changing the left side so we've been adjusting the right side and the reason for that is because that's the side not moving so much and the left side is moving extra thereby causing too much motion thereby causing pain so we'll be adjusting her right hip today so we'll have you lay on your left side facing me this way please cool and then just a little shuffle toward me good i'm gonna bend the leg here i'm gonna put that arm on that elbow cool good and then back to face down please Did Siri just say that adjustment was good? Yeah. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> cool. So a bit of mid back here. Right there. And go ahead and let your arms kind of glide forward a bit more. Yeah, there you go. Nice breath in. And out. Let that go. And go ahead and flip over on your back when you're ready, face up. How was that? That was a big one. Yeah. Man, <laughs> that we're was. saving that for YouTube. <laughs> I like it. Cool. And we'll have your body kind of come over this way just a little bit. Good. Straighten you up on the table just a bit. We'll be doing a neck adjustment here though. Checking in with the neck. guys for anyone who cares because some of you guys are paying attention to what segments we're adjusting this is c2 the second vertebrae down in the neck good first one was me second one was her good <laughs> cool so let's go ahead and have you stand up or actually we'll have you sit i want to double check in on that shoulder so i'll have you sit you'll be facing off to the right facing that way let me check in with the shoulder here so when it comes with the, to the shoulder, it's such a complex joint. There's so many things to check, not just here. The shoulder is connected by way of the collarbone. So we'll always check the collarbone. Something popping up as a shoulder might actually be a collarbone. And also you guys know the shoulder blade is connected to the shoulder and it's where the shoulder actually sits in the shoulder blade, okay? So the shoulder blade's not having an uh, easy enough time gliding across the ribs here Sometimes by adjusting this, we'll free up the shoulder. And that's pretty much what we've been doing for Yvonne most of the time, is a lot of this rib work here, because there's there's some tension here too, mm -hmm. tight muscles. So we'll have you just rotate your body to the right a bit, and then we'll grab out this guy, the activator, and we'll be running up the heads of the ribs, helping all those ribs glide around. So here we go. back to center doesn't feel like that's maybe doing a whole lot but do you feel that doing something yeah it feels good towards up top good good and then we're good there we'll have your left hand rest on this right shoulder I'm gonna be sitting right here so so same idea here the ribs we're just helping them glide around from a different angle those same ribs not always everyone's favorite adjustment so just a couple here Good. You do good with it though. Oh, you are a little ticklish. Uh oh. Two more. Last one. Good. <laughs> good. Stand up, move around a little bit, and then let's take that new posture picture. Cool? Cool. So we'll have you stand over here. You'll be facing that way. I'm going to sneak by you real quick. 
And then we will take the picture here. So from the front, just lining that up, not making your posture better or worse, whatever feels natural to you. Yep. Cool. And turn your whole body to the left for me, please. Good. Perfect. So hips, knees, and ankles, guys. We're looking for um, a straight line from our ear, shoulder, hips, knees, and ankles. The further forward we are, that's gonna cause a lot of tension on the back. And if we go forward and then come back, it's usually those points that we're feeling so much compression. So a lot of people here at the hips will feel it. For you, we're looking nice and straight. Green is ideal, red is tracing you. Okay, so here's the cool part. It's like, hey, was that better or worse than the first time? Who knows? Well, I know because I still got it from the first time. So you're, you came in January 5th. Mm -hmm. Today is February 11th. January 5th, February 11th. So uh, five weeks, we're gonna throw those into a side-by-side -side comparison. Oh, that's cool. That's cool, right? Cool, so we can see from the first, oh man, check that out. From the first time you came in, okay, all your problems were on the left. Mm -hmm. Your left shoulder was higher and you were leaning away from the hip and, and knee because it wouldn't make sense to put weight into where you're hurting. So you're leaning away from the pain as most people do. And you could see that because your head was literally on that side of center. Mm -hmm. Check that out today. Wow. Huge, huge yeah. difference in five weeks. But you used to have daily headaches mm -hmm. on the reg and you've had n none to few? Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Huge improvement. <laughs> five weeks later yeah. and we still got changes to make yeah. because hypothetically, like walk away from this and be like, well, I'm fixed, like I'm good. True, but if we just like never saw you again, this would be something that creeps back. Mm -hmm. So I'm still recommending to see Yvonne, but now we're at such a less frequency than what we were. Now we're transitioning towards this maintenance where she comes in every once in a while, not because she's in pain, because she's feeling good and she wants to keep feeling good, mm -hmm. right? Hey guys, Dr. Matt from Live Spring Chiropractic. We're here today with Stacy, and Stacy has got a laundry list Full of stuff. So what's going on, Stacey? Literally a whole page. Um, I had a lot of injuries as a kid and then growing up as an athlete, um, dislocated a lot of my major joints, car accident and surgeries on my knee and foot. So not really maintaining proper care over time and also being from a small town, not really having any proper posture monitoring, um, just kind of accumulated a lot of different injuries. And with we talked about in sports too right a lot of times mm -hmm. it's the shake it off mentality i think that gets so many of us in trouble so we did a full assessment off camera here i'm going to show the highlights here and the adjustments as we get going so one thing we mentioned was hypermobile or too oh, mobile yeah, yeah. in some of the joints right mm -hmm. and it's showing up on motion so i'll have you real quick too just so the camera can see looking down all the way as far as you can good and then up all the way as high as you can yeah so there's where we really see that hypermobility and that nose gets all the way flat the floor and then same with the ear to shoulder good up to both sides and that same thing so seeing that that's too mobile in my mind so I'm most of the time it'll be too mobile through the mid neck but something stuck either in the upper back or at the very top of the neck and that's exactly what we found with you mm -hmm. through our full assessment but motion is one of the tools posture another one that we looked at today and then muscle tests also so we're going to show some muscle tests down low. We'll start with the low back and work our way up. So let's have you start face down from these. And you've seen other chiropractors and just recently too, right? Yes, frequently. I've seen it a lot. Yeah, and this is another common thing that we find, but it's not always maybe the right spots or maybe it's not the specific thing uh, for us. So many times we'll see people that have been to other doctors, other chiropractors, PTs. You've been to the PT, yes? Yep. Okay. Many different ones. Okay, so we're... Yeah, they we're don't dig deep enough. So, <laughs> there we go. Is this a little different than what you've had? Yes, it's much more thorough so examination. Far. Okay, cool. So we're going to look at the glute muscle test first. We'll start with the left side. Stacey, I'll have you hold here. I'm going to push in. Don't let me. Okay. With this one, I'm going to push in. Don't let me. <laughs> so I can't believe how difficult that is. So that right when you feel it's not working at all, and for the people watching at home, I'm pushing the same strength on each side, but would you agree there's hardly anything in that right? Yeah. And this left one, I'm going to push straight down. Don't let me. Okay. And then, and not great there. We're going to push straight down. Don't let me. And nothing there. And that's... 
So the glue media is in glue box on the right side. Don't worry, we'll let you redeem yourself. <laughs> and then feeling for motion here, we're seeing to if the joint moves correctly, and if it doesn't, then over time it'll become painful. And that's right there, safety with that right side. It's not moved. And I was showing her off camera here, it's the sacrum that's not moving, that's stuck. And that's what we're gonna get moving today. And then here in the mid back, right there, that one as well. And what I'm feeling for this muscle tension on the right side is really ropey even there. So that's something we want to see go away. And then at the very, very top, that's the atlas. And we found that right side of the atlas. And when we side bend the neck from side to side, when we're finding one's not moving as much, that's where I'm really looking at. So we'll start with the adjustments here and then we'll reshow some of these muscle tests. Uh, let's start you on your side, uh, facing me this way, please. And I'm gonna bend that, there we go. She knows, it's like you've adjusted before. <laughs> <laughs> and you said last time was a couple weeks. Since uh, you last week. Oh, last week, okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna roll you toward me here. Good. And I'm gonna pin your hips down and little push there. A little more. There we go, good. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> and then let's have you go face down for me. Oh. So I wanna recheck those. Now's your chance to redeem yourself. <laughs> so we're gonna start with that left again. Hold out here for me, please. So good, that left stronger too. I don't know if you feel that, okay. even though you're on that right side. So hold here. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then I'm gonna bend the knee. Let's bring that up. I'm gonna push down, don't let me. One more time, hold. A lot stronger. Not perfect, but a lot stronger. Would you agree? Yes. Move your out of the way here. Yeah. So right there. Big breath in for me, please. Good, and let it all go. Good, and that's really stuck. And we've got some, the ribs that are involved there too, right there. I'm pushing, that's the rib cage. So you're gonna feel your chest pop up from underneath you. And then just very lightly, you're gonna feel this drop. You okay with that? Uh-huh. Okay. There, that's better. And then another rib right above it. And what I'm feeling for are those, the ribs are getting stuck along that scapula, so that shoulder. If that shoulder is not moving or tracking correctly uh -huh. many times, that'll be why, right there. The ribs. The ribs, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go figure. But you had a car wreck, yes? Mm-hmm. And you didn't get any treatment after, correct? Nothing. Okay. So, they have not healed correctly, so we got some work to do. Let's have you sit up for me, please. We're gonna do this next one seated. Okay. So this is the top bone in the neck. This is a spring-loaded instrument. I'll show you on your leg here so you can feel what it's okay. like. It's gonna be on your neck on the top bone on the right side. So head down for me, please. Do you notice that, where I'm touching? It's really tight. Yes, exactly. What did you just say? Mostly on the right side, yeah? So you feel mm -hmm. the difference more than the left. Now let's have you look straight ahead. And as we make an adjustment there. Good, and then head down one more time for me, please. What do you notice? Looser. Yeah. That Wait, that was an adjustment? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we're so used to an adjustment being like a pop. Very or dramatic. Track. Yeah. So you just experience that wow. difference. Does so it feel different when you move it too? Mm -hmm. So motion changes immediately, muscle tone changes immediately, the position of the bone changes immediately. That's when adjustment takes place. We're so used to seeing or hearing like a crack or a pop, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, let's have you line your back for me, please. We're gonna check. So with the left knee, you had, it was an ACL and a meniscus. ACL and meniscus twice. ACL was fully replaced yes. and meniscus was so reconstructed So these are major twice. surgeries on the left knee, fully replaced. And I wanna show the highlights of a couple of the weak points here. So let's have the toes out toward me, and then I'm gonna push the leg down, don't let me. And that's, again, the patchy is mm -hmm. how I would describe it. Yeah. It's like the strength is there, it's not, it's there, it's not. And we want it to be consistently able to hold, and it's not. 
and you had felt that you told me before yep. were you feeling that again still on that yeah. inside part mm -hmm. so go ahead and relax that leg for me please and when I examine the full knee, I'm shortcutting it here on video, but we looked at everything structurally first. So when I pressed in all directions on your knee, yeah. making sure the ligaments are still intact, they are, they're strong and they're holding. So it's good to be adjusted, but even then I'm not going to hammer it. It's going to be light because again, an adjustment could happen either that quick, what you've seen before or light. Okay. This is a light one. Okay. So. I've never had my knees adjusted, so this well, is really interesting. <laughs> so this is a drop piece. You've had it, I think, on your pelvis mm -hmm. you were describing to me. Mm -hmm. It's going to pop up and then drop down like that. Okay. But it's for the knee, so let's have your knee here. And then right there. Is that all right? Yeah. Almost feels like nothing, feel right? Like yeah, exactly. That's what we want. <laughs> It's not as tender, actually. That's what we want. You look confused. <laughs> I didn't know that was <laughs> <Are you> possible. <laughs> <laughs> and then toes out toward me, please. And then same thing. I'm going to push it down. You feel the difference. Oh my right? gosh. Yeah. So I can feel it. You can feel it. I'll let you describe it. I seriously thought I was just going to be in that amount of pain forever because of how many surgeries I've had on that knee. And at the end here, we'll have you walk on it too, which is okay. really cool because when you stand on it, it's going to feel completely different and wow. more supported underneath you. But there's more to be done. And okay. you had multiple ankle injuries on both, both sides ankles. and a surgery on the right foot. Correct? Yeah, so the hypermobile joints is I think the reason I roll my ankles so much, but then I had this joint here, the big toe joint kept dislocating in my sleep where I'd wake up in the middle of the night and this toe was like pointed down. Uh -huh. So a surgeon screwed these bones together, um, which I, I think now is hurting my ankle even more, but I haven't had as many issues there, but so what happens when anything's glued together, either by choice from surgery or from the body if it's degenerated enough, is it will become typically more painful over time. But in certain times, we want to do that to try to stabilize it more like this to stop dislocating. But because of that, when I was feeling your foot off camera, I mentioned here that little bit of swelling and it's not moving as well on that right foot. So absolutely, I think that from this, it totally has affected the mobility of your ankle. So first motion, and what sports did you play? Growing volleyball, up? softball, track, so basketball. The volleyball and basketball were the- and gymnastics were the, was the most injuries. <laughs> so there we go. And those three are huge for ankle rolls, little ankle sprains. A lot of times people say, well, I never had an injury because it wasn't formally diagnosed, or right? The coach would just say, shake it off, keep right, playing. Right. But it's still an injury, so mm -hmm. they can add up. Yeah. You said it well, that accumulation of all the little things, and they add up. So here, that first one on the outside is the cuboid I'm going to pull toward me here. There we go. And again, for not all of you, Stacey, you'll hear a noise, but we'll feel that joint move, and that's what happened a little bit here. There we go. And then the heel also. And that's what's really stuck was that heel. Now, I'm not going to be on that joint that was fused together. Obviously, I'm not going to try to break apart a fusion. Oh, good. Thank you. But we're going <laughs> to free up all the neighboring joints around it that are taking more pressure or more stress. And with this, I'm going to use a light force technique also. You yeah, haven't seen yet. How many tools does this guy have? <laughs> this now. It's a little different than okay. the one we used on your neck. It was like that. Okay. Super light. Pretty crazy that I never did physical therapy on my foot. I know. Surgery. I know, I'd say so too. And then the middle of the foot here, this is where, you know, it's these joints almost feel fused, Stacey, because they've They're been. They're so tight. Yeah, they just haven't moved so long. And then a little more on the heel. There we go. And this one should move a lot different. Yeah, so on that outside there. You're out different, it sounds even too. And that's the sign of a more healthy joint that sounds like that. And that too. <laughs> and one more on top. Good. And then on the outside there. Okay. Good. And let's have you take a few steps so we're all through. I want you to feel the difference okay. as you walk around and move a little bit and see maybe how different that feels. <laughs> what do you notice? 
in the UI. I don't feel anything in my knee, which is weird. <laughs> in a good way. Um, <laughs> how I feel kind of like light, like floaty. <laughs> how, how long has the knee been like that? Oh my gosh. That you had been feeling Let's it before. See. Um, we have a list. We literally have a list. I'm going to yeah. peek at this list. I want to say like 10 years. So 2007 was the left Longer, knee dislocation and the ACL. Yeah, so it's it's been years. I'm trying to do a squat. <laughs> yeah. And does that feel different? I feel like, yes, I feel like so much stronger. And actually my glutes are like, they're I right know right. I work out. I know I'm strong, <laughs> I, but they're like. They're Use, online. They're useful, yes. That's, yeah, because if we're using them and they're not working. I don't feel that in my hips either yeah. when I squat. 